Snow can be a magical scene, especially in countries like mine where we don't get that much of it. Now I love doing snow. You can just sprinkle it on for a temporary change to a diorama, or you can use it to cover some gaps or issues, or just create a special little diorama for the winter season, which is what this is. So this story starts with Nock. Every year they do an advent calendar where they have 24 small two to five minute videos using their own products. So they got in touch and gave us about three weeks to produce four. So I put my order in and all the supplies arrived. A little bit more than I was expecting, but at least I've got enough pine trees for anything I may ever want. So this video combines all four of those into one. The diorama starts with the Actabel Bridge. It's a hard foam ready-made bridge. You can just put it straight on your layout. You don't even need to paint it. An important part is research. So I looked at a lot of photos and found a backdrop that I like to go behind the bridge. I print it out in A3 and I'll mount it later. I'm using a picture frame as my base because they're easily available and they give it a nice finished look. I just remove the glass because I don't want that and then reassemble it. It's exactly the right size for the bridge, but it needs to be bedded into the landscape. It can't just be plonked on there. For that, I'm using foam rocks. These are hard foam and you can just cut them apart with a knife. And once you've scored a couple of times, you can snap them. They're on a carrier sheet, so you just need to trim them back to the edges of the rock. Again, score and snap. I played around with various off cuts of foam and the rocks until I had an arrangement I was pleased with. I added one solid piece of foam to allow me to put the river in. I marked the bridge location and I hot glued it all in place before carving it with some hot wire tools. I carried on and carved out the riverbed. I needed my rocks to sit into the landscape, so I carved out a little niche for them to sit down into. Finally, I trimmed any excess foam off the back so that my rocks would fit neatly against the edge. Then I hot glued everything into place. I did check the foam would melt with the hot glue and then I put the bridge in too, followed by the rocks. I wanted a face around the outside and a backdrop at the back, so I used black foam core to create edges. I didn't stick the back edge on because I needed access to the scenery, especially the river at the back. I then marked the contours I wanted on the side pieces before cutting everything out. I left the back side pieces very tall so I could curve my backdrop round onto them and then I glued everything together with copious amounts of hot glue. Finally, I hand carved with a knife just a little slope on the front of the bridges. You could go straight to the snow pace stage at this point, but I wanted a little bit of earth to show through. So I mixed some earth with some vermiculite just to pad it out and then added some landscaping glue to bind it into a paste. I used this paste to fill in the holes around the edges of the rocks just to stop them looking so stark before sprinkling some more soil and vermiculite over the flat surfaces in case anything showed through under the bridge around the bottom of the trees or the rocks. The riverbed needed to be stony rather than soily, so I used ballast in a light grey colour so it will show through all my resin water later. At this point everything is still dry, so I soaked it with water and isopropyl alcohol, about a third isopropyl alcohol, and this soaks in and allows the glue, my knock landscaping glue that I sprayed on next, to sink into the whole area, otherwise the underneath layers may not be glued. Finally, I mopped up any excess where I didn't need it, such as the bridge, and used 50% landscaping glue with water just to drip onto the thicker areas to make sure they were well and truly glued. Then I just left it all to set overnight. Once it's well and truly dry, you need to seal it. Otherwise you'll get yellow snow. I find this is easiest with a plastic coat hobby and craft sealer. It doesn't affect my foam, which means those bits under the bridge will be fine. Lacquers, unfortunately, may eat them away. The river itself has a resin base, which means a two-part epoxy. The most important thing for that is putting a dam in. So I sand the front to make sure that it's all nice and smooth and I can get a flush fit and I use acetate just glued in place to create a resin proof dam. 
I really like resin and this is a simple and effective one to use. You do need to wear gloves as it is fairly noxious stuff and it's a one-to-one -one mix so you can just pour the same amount into each of two measuring cups. I'm using an acrylic model paint to add a little bit of a grey colour to the bottom layer. Once that's mixed in half, you can add the other side in, mix them together and pour them between the two cups until it's all well and truly mixed. You will have bubbles, but we'll deal with those in a minute. They recommend leaving it for half an hour and in that time I decided I wanted it a bit darker. So I added a little bit of a darker grey into there and then I just poured it in a thin stream into my diorama. I let it tip from one end to the other to make sure it covered where I wanted and I used a stick to make sure it flowed to the edges properly. And now to deal with those bubbles. The answer is a chef's blowtorch. You just wave it quickly over the surface and they just magically pop. You may need to come back and do it a couple of times. The next morning the first layer was set so I mixed a slightly more translucent dark grey over the top. I didn't want to put much opacity in. And then I just poured that before popping all the bubbles again. To avoid fingerprints in your resin, keep one of the mixing bowls. And when it's set, you can remove the dams and take off the meniscus. It always rises a bit towards the edges, but you can get rid of that with a knife. I still needed to add the front fascia, but I waited until after I'd done the river so I could dam it without affecting the fascia itself. Then I hot glued it in place. Next up is probably the most crucial part of any winter diorama, the snow. If you haven't sealed your base, at this point I recommend that you do before you put any snow on. You can apply snow paste anywhere you want a drift of snow. Now I ended up applying quite a lot of it, making the soil that was underneath a bit superfluous. So if you've just got plain foam or any other kind of base material, this is a great way to cover it up. It also is it's very easy to plant vegetation into the snow paste. These are just knock reeds. I cut them in half and use both ends and I just put it in and feathered it out. More knock vegetation and I've got something in there that will just give it a bit of structure and depth. I tried all my trees in place before putting the snow on just to work out where the branches would probably cover. This is actually mostly gone by the end, but at some times of the year, the soil will show through more than others. I also added snow paste to the bridge and formed a few snow drifts up there. I wanted to add another layer of depth to the snow, so I protected the river with masking tape so it wouldn't stick to that. And I sprayed all of the areas with knock landscaping glue. When it was well and truly wet, I sprinkled on, using a sieve, some pulver schnee. This is quite fine if you start sneezing, wear a mask. It gives a nice texture and just ties all of the various different bits together. And because there's also glue on the side of the bridge, it will put a nice snow coat there. Now at this point, only the very bottom of your snow is actually glued. So I went over it again with a very, very, very large amount of spray glue. And this is 50% water, so it will sink in quite a lot. There is a danger though, if you have very thick layers of snow, that the bottom layers don't get glued properly. So if you want to be doubly certain, turn it upside down and tap the snow off between layers. I also checked my tree fitted and had somewhere flat. It's a big tree before removing the masking tape and cleaning the river. Don't forget if you've got people or vehicles in the scene to walk them along so they add some footprints. The banks of winter rivers have beautiful icy effects and I replicated those by using model water, it's artificial water, model Vassa and the pulver schnee. I added a really small amount, not all this paint went in, a very small amount of grey paint just to change the colour slightly and I put it along the edges of the river. I left the central channel open, as you often see, and just did a nice wavy effect ice. And I hoped it would just blend a little bit into the snow around the edges, creating a nice line. When all that was dry, it was on to making the waves. I used a thin layer of resin. Now I let it sit for about three hours before I put it on. So it was a little bit thicker and it wouldn't just run everywhere. And then I pushed it up against the edge of that ice. I need the ice to be fairly flat. It's not a huge ramp up from the water. So by the time this thickness of resin is in, it should be more or less level. 
About two hours later, I came back and scored in some waves with a cocktail stick. Now the resin isn't set yet, so these will mostly smooth out and this will vary depending on the temperature of your room. I scored the area under the bridge far less because it was more sheltered. Another hour later and I came back and used, this is actually one of those free stirrer sticks you get from a coffee shop, and I pushed the resin, it was too thick really to score anymore, and I pushed it into very large waves so I'd get a nice flowing effect. This layer didn't smooth out as much as some of the other layers, so I ended up with some nice large waves, and you can see the finished result here. Now we've got some small vegetation in, but I needed trees. And they're so easy to do with existing trees. I chose to do a mix of pine trees and a deciduous tree just for a bit of variety. I used a selection of sizes of these particular pine trees. They're beautifully made and very easy. I also used this lime tree to add a deciduous tree with these nature trees to add some branches. You can easily skip this stage, but I thought the branches were just perhaps a little too flat in panels, so I waved them over a hot air gun just to droop them little. It's very easy to overdo this. I then used the nature trees in small sprigs to fill out the bare winter branches. Gluing these needs an instant glue, so super glue is ideal, but it still takes quite a while to set, so I like to use activator as well. So what I do is check where I want the branch to go, dip it in a little bit of super glue, spray activator where I need it, and then just touch the branch in place. The activator sets the super glue straight away and your branch will stay fixed. Much easier than any other method I've tried, but it does take a long time. You have to build up each branch step by step. I think the results make it worthwhile and when it's done you can spray it with some kind of spray brown paint to make sure it all matches. The photo I'm using as a backdrop though is mostly pine trees so I need to make sure there's plenty of those on this diorama. I put them in a few different spots, saw what sizes I needed, checked everything fitted together and then I scrunched them up because I wanted them to look less uniform. It doesn't really stick that well. These are very robust springy branches, but I just bent them a little bit out of shape so there was variety. Now it's time to add the snow and I'm using snowflakes and powdery snow for this. First up though, spray glue. This is actually watered down 50-50 for a finer spray and I coat the trees well in it from all angles, slightly from above. For the pine trees, I sprinkle on the snowflakes. It's a fine flock, a white flock, like static grass. So the needle shape of it works really well for things like pine trees. For the deciduous tree, I want more of a sort of a frosty bear look with a little bit of snow caught on. And I use the powdery snow for that. It just gives a slightly different effect. What you do need to do though is turn it upside down and shake it to make sure you remove all the excess, otherwise it will just keep coming off. A second layer can really help build up the snow. I left the trees on the side and got on with mounting a bit of black foam core for the back. I wanted to slide my photo backdrop in from the top and put it in down the side of the bridge. So I created this template to make sure it fitted properly and covered all the areas it needed to. Then all I had to do was slide the final photo backdrop into place. I secured the sides and the back with just a glue stick. It's an office glue stick, but it's acid free so it won't yellow the paper. Once that was in, it was time to put the trees in place. I just shoved the back trees down the gap and they actually remained wedged in place. The other trees were hot glued in place and just held until it set. I do recommend two things. One, using tweezers if you can, because I have a nice blister from putting my finger in some very hot glue. And two, scrape away any of the snow before you actually put your trees in place. Otherwise, you're just gluing onto a fine powder and they'll fall off very easily. If the bottoms of the trees are showing, you'll want to come back with a little spot of glue and a little bit of snow and just cover them up. The magic of video makes that sound very easy, but it turned out to be one of the worst bits of the whole build. I used a brush to dab glue where it was needed and then tried to get the snow in place. I tried blowing it in off a teaspoon, but it ended up really lumpy. 
but I knew a sieve would work, so I sprayed on more landscaping glue. Not an ideal amount to get glue all over it at this point, and then just use the sieve as before. A couple of coats did the trick though, and the other trees went much more simply. The finishing touches really bring a winter diorama to life. I chose this winter family, the Mayers, because I really like the poses with the kids. I used some washes, flesh coloured and dark coloured, around the clothing and the face, just to add depth to everything and to make them pop. I used a spot of tacky glue on the feet and put them in place. They're not in place permanently, so I have the option to move them around if I want. And with the people in place, our winter wonderland is done. Well, there we go. The end. And a happy ending at that. I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, subscribe, hit the bell button. You know the drill. All the materials I used are on my website listed. And you can pop on over there, buy yourself a sweatshirt, or pop over to Patreon as well.